Pepper Young's family. Pepper Young's family is the true-to-life story of your friends, the Youngs. In a moment, today's story, after this message from our sponsor. The usual fuss that accompanies a trip is taking place in the Young's household. Mary Young is sewing, preparing a dress for Peggy. And of course, there are the usual doubts, fears, questions, the regular rumpus when the daughter of the house takes a big step in her life. Peggy's going to Chicago to meet the Trents. And Mary Young wants her daughter to look as lovely as she possibly can. As Mary sews, Peggy comes rushing in. Mama! Oh, Mama! Mama! Mama, look, look! Look at what? At this, at my ring! Mama, look! Your ring? Oh, Peggy! Father was waiting for me, and he put it on my finger, and... Oh, Mama, isn't it divine? Isn't it the most gorgeous thing you've ever seen? It's beautiful. It's bigger than anybody else's engagement ring I ever saw. And, and look what a lovely blue-white diamond. Oh, I keep looking at it all the time, but I still can't believe I've got it. Mom, have I really, truly got it, or am I dreaming all this? It seems to be there on your finger all right. And he was so sweet when he gave it to me. He, he was in a terrible hurry, but he took my arm and he, he walked me away and said, Darling, I've got something for you. <laughs> I, I never thought of it being a ring. I just couldn't imagine what he meant. And then he pulled the box out of his pocket and said, I hope it's the right size, Peg. And I, I opened it and I, I couldn't speak. I couldn't think. I was so happy. And then he, he took the ring out of the box and slipped it on my finger. And, and Mommy, he, he kissed it after he put it on my finger. I, I still couldn't say anything. It's hard to say things at a moment like that. It's almost as if you felt so much that you couldn't find any words to say it. I just said... Oh, Carter. And I, I just kept looking at my finger with a ring on it. and oh, I, I'm not even going to try to sleep tonight. I, I'm just going to keep on looking at it forever. Well, I'm not sure about your wearing it to school, though, Peggy. Don't you think it might look a little like showing off? Oh, no. I've got to wear it. Don't you see? I, I'm engaged now, and I've got to wear his ring. And besides, he, he said, keep this on your finger, will you, Peggy, till I can put a wedding ring there in its place. Mm-hmm. I see. So I've got to keep it on because he said that to me. I... I want you to keep a ring on your finger from me forever as a symbol that this will last forever. Oh, Mama, he says the most beautiful thing. He certainly does. I haven't showed it to anybody else. I wanted you to be the first to see it, and I'm so glad you're home. I, I would have just about died if you hadn't been. Mama, just think, I'm really engaged now. Isn't it wonderful to be as happy as this? Yes, Peggy, it is wonderful. You think in all your happiness you could try on a dress? Uh, a dress? Yes, dear. The dinner dress you're going to wear when you meet his parents. Oh, Mama, you should have seen his face when he put the ring on my finger. He looked so, so earnest. Take off your dress, Peggy, and try this one on. What for? Oh, Peggy, Peggy, I've been trying to tell you that I want to fit this on you. Mama, do you know what I wish? Well, I know what I wish. I wish you'd get out of that dress. I wish I could give him something. I mean, something to remember getting engaged by. Some present that he could keep always, too. I, I don't know what to give him. What do you think would be nice? I'm sure I don't know. Slip into this now, will you, dear? Oh, I think that's what makes being in love so perfect. Not not just being in love, but the fact that there's somebody who concentrates on you all the time, and, and you concentrate on them. Yes, that makes it perfect. Now, concentrate on this dress a minute. I am concentrating. It looks lovely. Darn, you haven't even looked at yourself in the mirror. Mama, when he put that ring on my finger, I thought I'd die. I felt so happy, it just didn't seem as if I could bear it. And instead of saying anything, I just stood there. You know, I don't think this is going to look so bad when I get through with it. What isn't going to look so bad? Oh, for heaven's sake, Peggy. Take it off. Go and show your ring to the whole neighborhood. And when you get all through, come back here and I'll try the dress on you properly. I thought it was so darling of him when he said he wanted me to keep a ring of his on my finger forever. As a symbol that this would last forever. Don't you think that was darling of him, Mama? Yes, I think everything was darling of him. There now. Get into your old dress and run along. You may as well stay on your pink cloud as long as you can. It's the thrill that comes once in a lifetime. We'll return to the story of Pepper Young's family after this message from our sponsor. Sponsor. 
As Peggy faces her future happiness, her father faces defeat. He is closing his Johnstown office, realizing that he has failed in his career. It's evening now, and Hal Beeman, driving past, notices a light in the window. Hal mounts the steps of the office and enters. Well, didn't expect to see you here this late at night, Mr. Young. Well, I... Yes, yes, it is getting pretty late, isn't it? It sure is. Anything I can do for you? Well, not a thing, Hal, no. Have you had the dinner? No, I haven't, as a matter of fact. I, I've been so very busy, I forgot all about it. I, I, um... I'm shutting up shop tonight. What? You mean you're closing the office for good? Yep. Closing up the office for good. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to have to do it. If I'd known that, Mr. Young, I'd have come around to give you a hand. There's nothing to do, Hal, but clear out my desk and take all this junk away. Say, uh, Mr. Young, why don't you go home? This must have been a tough day for you, closing up here. Well, a little tough. Oh, you put everything you had into this business, you and Mr. Bradley. It's a shame to have to fold up after trying so hard to make a go of it. Well, at least Mr. Bradley's got a good prospect. Did he go to Chicago? Yes, he's gone. That's been the one bright spot in this whole business. Mr. Bradley's going on to bigger and better things. You know, just the fact that he's found something to do has given me hope that I may be able to do the same thing. Oh, of course you'll find something, Mr. Young. And if I hear of anything, uh... Well, I mean, would you like me to let you know? Well, I certainly would. And I don't care what it is either, Hal. Just as long as I can make an honest living at it. Okay, I'll start to work on it tomorrow. Well, thanks again, Hal. And you're a good friend. Oh, good friend. Well, you're responsible for everything good that's ever happened to me, even my getting married to Ruth. I can't tell you how happy we are together. <laughs> if that's the way you feel about it, you get along back to your bride and stop sitting here and talking to your ex-employer. I'm going right now, but... Well, I sort of hate to leave you here all alone. I'd rather see you in your car starting for Elmwood. No, I... I I'm going to sit here a while. Uh, I, well, it's... It's the last time I'll be in this office, and I'd rather like to stay here a few minutes more. But don't you think if you sit here alone, maybe you'll get to feeling low? Maybe I will. But I think I'll sit here just the same. Well, if there's nothing I can do... Not a thing. And give my love to Ruth. I will. Good night, Mr. Young. Oh, uh, you won't stay here too long alone, will you? No, no, Hal. Now, don't worry about me. I'm all right. Good night. Good night. Let's see. I got everything. Desks all cleaned out and nothing left for me to do but to go home. Nothing left for me to do. I don't want to go. I don't want to leave this place. I'm afraid to leave it. That's it, I'm afraid. Afraid I'll never have a desk of my own again. Afraid? What's the matter with you, Sam Young? Afraid all of a sudden. You're still young, you're not 50, full of vim and vigor and vitality and... face it. Your husband you're so proud of. I know I am. Nothing you can say can change it. If I weren't, would I be closing up this office? Would I? Would I be saying goodbye to all this? A failure. Dad? Right. Dad, what's the matter? Well, I, what are you doing here, Pepper? Well, I telephoned home. I wouldn't be there for dinner and Mom said to look in on you and make sure you were all right. Why, well, I'm all right. You don't look all right. Only that I... I hate to leave this place. I, I hate to close this office for good. I hate to admit that I'm licked. Who said you were licked? It's no use, and I know it. Oh, you just feel down because you're sitting here all alone. I'll bet you haven't had any dinner, have you? No. Well, let's get out of here and turn over a new chapter and get some food, and I'll drive you home. And believe me, you won't talk about being licked when I get through with you. Come on now. Grab your hat. We're going on to bigger and better things. And now, this message from our sponsor.
Pepper appeared at precisely the right moment to save his father from a plunge into a pitch black mood. Perhaps Sam Young will find a way to good fortune again. But how? Listen to the story of Pepper Young's family tomorrow. This has been a production of Nano Radio. Lee Stevens speaking. Thank you.